The article that tickled my fancy uh, out of the, all the smittles this week was the article on Celsius and how it went bankrupt. Uh, and what I need to do here is kind of lay some foundation as to how, how number one, these networks went bankrupt because we're talking about not just Celsius. There are several that are in bankruptcy court right now, uh, several meaning about five or six. Uh, the big ones are Celsius and Voyager and Three Arrows are the three. Now, Celsius was what they call a DeFi or DeFi app, a distributed finance application. Now, one thing about distributed finance applications is they want to act like a bank. The problem is that they're not a bank. They are a blockchain application on the Ethereum blockchain. They're using smart contracts. So what's happened here is Celsius was a coin and you can still see Celsius as a coin on all the exchanges. It's still traded. Uh, it still exists. Even though they're in bankruptcy, the, uh, the company is still active and still working. The problem that happens though with these kind of applications is that they are not banks. And that's a problem because people think of it's finance, they're paying me interest, therefore it's a bank, um, but it's not. And part of the challenge, of course, then is in regard to how they react when the when the company starts having troubles okay so here you are with celsius now celsius basically got their start right around you know september of 2020 and as they gained investors of course the market was going up okay so here you have the market going up they filed for bankruptcy over here in july of 2022 so in July, they're filing for bankruptcy. Why? Why are they filing for bankruptcy? Well, problem with a crypto company is that they're new and they're not regulated. They basically, they ran their business like any other business. They took the money, fiat currency, dollars in this regard, they went out to investors to get money to fund their operations. So they're paying payroll, they're paying for computers, they're paying for facilities, all of the things that a normal business pays for. That costs a certain amount every single month. So what ends up happening is when you're riding high up here and Celsius the coin is going really, really well, they're actively investing that coin in other options that they have. They invested in Voyager. They invested in Three Arrows. Three Arrows in particular was a, a venture capital firm that helped these other companies to um, get off the ground. Okay, so the challenge then is how is Celsius, the company, going to take money from investors you and me and bunches of other people, 100,000 clients they said they had at the peak of their business. So when we invest in them, we're thinking that they're a bank and they're gonna pay us interest. They were paying as much as 17% interest on the coin. Okay, so here's the hit kicker though. If you put a dollar in a bank and you're getting 17% back per year, you expect a dollar seventeen at the end of the year. If you invest one Celsius coin, no matter what the value of that coin is in in fiat currency or in dollars, you invest a dollar of fiat coin. Let's say you invest ten dollars; it'll buy about one point two coins if you buy the coins up here, and they're going to pay you back one point two plus seventeen percent interest after a year. Okay, now after a year, well, they didn't even last a year before the turndown in the cryptocurrency market happened. And all of a sudden the value of the coin is going down. So now let me go back to the article. Uh, here we have the story of Kristen Ostheimer, a 37 year old living in Connecticut, wrote in a letter to the court 
says that he put his entire retirement savings and lost more than $30,000, which has brought him into insurmountable tax complications. Now, I don't know what kind of tax complications he could have by losing a bunch of money unless he took his retirement savings out and he has to pay taxes on the 30,000, but he doesn't have the 30,000 anymore because the coin value went down. Well, part of the challenge with that then is he bought a certain number of coins, the Celsius coins with that 30,000 the Celsius coins went down in value. And even though he was promised that he would get paid 17%, he was gonna get paid 17% of the coins value, the Celsius coins value. So for every one Celsius coin that he bought at the end of the year, he'd get 1.17 Celsius coins back. So I'm going to pop up my graphic again here so you've got a Celsius coin now that's worth down here in the 50 cent category. And he bought it, let's say up here in the $7, almost $8 category. So now he has, let's say he has a hundred coins that he bought at 750, let's say, let's say a hundred coins at $8. So he, he put in $800 down here. They're only worth 50 cents. So down, down here now he's saying, well, doggone it, I put $30,000 into there. Okay. Now he owes taxes on $30,000 because he took out the money out of his retirement fund. So he invests $800 here. Now it's worth only 50 cents of that $8. So it's now worth only $50. So he's lost $750 of value here. And Dagon, he's going to get 100, 117 coins at the end of the year. But that extra 17 coins is only going to be worth $34. $34 or actually $8.5 because it's, it's 50 cents. So you've got a situation where people are losing meaningful money. But it's not necessarily because of what Celsius did wrong. The problem with Celsius being in bankruptcy and why they're being accused of being a Ponzi scheme is they kept on taking investors in. And of course, when people wanted to withdraw their money, they kept on paying those investors out. The money going in and buying the Celsius coins probably was not tied to a particular individual. In other words, they didn't create what they call custodial accounts. So basically when you deposit money in a savings account, the bank keeps track of the fact that you have a certain amount deposited in the savings account. But frankly, that money gets loaned to people to buy an auto or to buy a house. That money, even though on their ledgers, you, it says that you have deposited that amount of money, it doesn't necessarily mean that the same dollars that you deposited are the dollars that you're going to get back. So it could be said that a bank is a Ponzi scheme too, because you'll deposit those dollars, but you'll get different dollars back if you decide to withdraw it. And if the bank was going bankrupt or there was a run on the bank, it could be said that they're a big Ponzi scheme too. The whole point is that they kept paying the depositors who wanted to withdraw out of the funds that they had available. And that some of those funds that they had available could have been coming from current depositors to pay people who had been there a long time and were leaving the platform. Okay. And frankly, there were a lot of people leaving those platforms because the coin values were going down and there was essentially a run on the bank and they ran out of money. Now, part of the challenge here that ran them into bankruptcy is, is that because they're not regulated a lot of times, they will go and convert what coin they have into dollars and they will go invest in a Bitcoin firm and they'll buy Bitcoin to put on the shelf as collateral and so forth. So converting it to dollars and then investing it in another crypto company. And if that crypto company goes bankrupt and they can't get their money back, all of a sudden they've got depositors money that's been invested so that they can pay them the 17% and it's lost, it's gone. 
by the time they filed bankruptcy, where they at one point had $4.7 billion in customer holdings, um, they ended up with $5.5 billion in liabilities. And by the time they filed bankruptcy, they only had $167 million in cash on hand to start paying those liabilities. That's what you call bankruptcy. You are so badly upside down that you can't see your way out of it. So the bankruptcy court right now, of course, is taking testimony from all the people that lost. That's a normal thing in a bankruptcy court. So what what will happen now is Celsius will, will either continue working on retrieving as much money as they can to pay their creditors, which means basically to pay the people who deposited with them, or the courts will basically say, you're too badly upside down. You close your doors and we'll just retrieve what we can and pay, pay off the creditors. Um, and they're badly upside down enough that it looks like um, it looks like they won't won't recover from it. So let's see here. Yeah, they were they were involved with Three Arrows Capital who went bankrupt. They defaulted on their loans and Voyagers in bankruptcy as well. And all of them were kind of interlinked, which caused a lot of the problem. So here's another situation where, and, and it's a cautionary tale, you don't involve yourself in risky investments because basically if it's too good to be true, it probably is. 17% is a lot of return on investment that supposedly is, supposedly is guaranteed. I don't know what guaranteed means in the distributed finance world because there is, is no guarantee when it comes to cryptocurrencies, period. And so I've been very reluctant to get involved in any cryptocurrency in a distributed finance application at this point because they're just too new. They're just too immature at this point. Okay, so that's the story of Celsius.